Hi, welcome to today's show of Focus. Today with me, I have one of the co-founder of the Guyana Cancer Foundation, Ms. Bibi Hassan. She will definitely tell us what the foundation does, what it's about, and where she and also what she intends to achieve from this such a, a wonderful place and also a place whereby or in which offers mentorship and other services to cancer survivors and individuals who also fight against cancer. So Miss Bibi, it's a privilege also having you as being some time. This has been since um let me guess February. Yes, when you approached me to when do I an interview. You to do for us interview. But nevertheless you're here with us today. So to our viewers who don't know who Miss Bibi Hassan is, do you mind letting them I know? I am exactly Bibi Saida Akhtar Hassan, president and founder of Guyana Cancer Foundation. We're located at 351 East Street, North Commonsburg, opposite the GPAT Ambulance Park. Okay, great. Can you just tell us a bit about your Cancer Foundation and its mission? Our Cancer Foundation was registered in 2016, June 1st. And our mission and vision is to help cancer patients uh, for free screening, um, free screening in the terms of getting uh, like mammogram, sonogram, free cervical cancer screening. Also, we are we are partner with Dr. Balwan Singh Hospital uh, since 2019, and we're doing all our screening program there. And this screening program is through the kind courtesy of all our donors and sponsor, local sponsors in Guyana, like GBTI Bank, Tosi Passat, Quarries, and other companies that um, donate to us. Great, so what actually is- Exxon, Exxon oh, Mobil. Oh, nice. Yeah, Exxon Mobil, they mm -hmm. came on board. I have uh, so many, uh, I can't rem remember all the names. You have small donors and you have big donors too. Nice. So what actually inspired you? Uh, you um, well, I actually became a cancer advocate in 2005 with Avon Community Health Fund on Camp Street. You know, the, the place that used to sell Avon products, they, they had a franchise for Guyana and Suriname. And after... Avon was dissolving the Caribbean on the 29th of January 2015. A few months after, the CEO for that um, entity, Ms. Ann Singh, and her father, who was the chairman, they called me and told me that they want to, um, to share something with me and if um, they would like me to take over that part of the organization and register it as a nonprofit organization to carry on the work that they used to do. And I took up took up the challenge with my late co-founder, Dr. Ravindranath Itchlangad, who was my, my co-founder. He died in January 12th. So the two of us, we, we come together and we started the foundation and we started to do work. We, we started to do work behind the scene 2015 and 2016 when we were registered. We go public and, and do, do, do work with the kind donors. Great. I had like new GPC and uh, oh, Massey, Massey is distribution. Should, so yeah. all, all those are uh, sponsors. Also, you have Jurgens, which is part of um, Massey too. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, the famous cream. Yeah, yeah they, they're part of our um, of sponsor. Just when I came back, um, I received a check from them. Great. With from They did a promotion with Jurgens product and I got a, a check from them. How does the foundation impact the lives of those affected by cancer? Uh, well, we have a vibrant cancer survivors club with like 35 members. Mm -hmm. I try to give them free counseling. We have a, a, a counseling session that go on every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. We have a face-to-face -face session with people who, with persons who are affected by cancer to come to our foundation and we do a face-to-face -face session. And then online, we have it on Monday night who can't come. We do that online session. And this girl is from Uruguay. She has her master's degree in, in psychology. Wow. Um, her name is um, Natasha Moronai, and she's from Uruguay. So what are some of the biggest challenges, you know, you have faced in running this The biggest actually? challenge I'm facing, uh, we need more uh, funding that I can do more work like go out more in different communities and this will i would say like the government should come in uh, come in into place to help us to um, 
to go into different communities because when you have to go let me just say like palm Road, you have to hire a boat um, like right now, we want to go in Region 1 and that would, we have to go by plane. Mm. Uh, we plan to go there um, sometime, maybe June, we want to go there to do a, a, a medical outreach program. And now, medical outreach program is not only doing cancer, it's overall because we will take like the, the blood bank, we take the eye testing team from new GPHC, right? Uh, we also collaborate with... Uh, Central Islamic Organization. Mm, yes, yeah. we all come together. Uh, we have um, Dauntless Therapeutic Body Works. He do the massages. Mm -hmm. We also do with Suya, Suya International. They do like sanitizers and so. Mm -hmm. So we all come together and do um, thing, and then we do counseling as well too. Great. On these on on these um, out medical outreach program. So we don't just do one thing. We do a general medical outreach program. Great. Sometimes you can get like 300 people come to it. And stuff wow. Like that. Yeah. wow. So how do you guys, you know, go about, you know, raising funds for the foundation? Well, what we know, our biggest fundraiser is in, in October. Yeah. And because of COVID and so we didn't have it, and we started back um, last October mm -hmm. and we had um, over 3,000 people came and walked with us. I can send you the video. Wow. And you will see that. It was it, um, what's happening, Guyana. They um, did the video for us. And what are the roles, you know, that the donors, you know, tend to play in your work? Well, well, they would actually, we would send out letters to them and um, we, would, we would invite them to come to our office as well. Mm. And, and they can see the work that we do and interact. If they want to interact with any of our um, cancer patients or any one of the directors, they are free to come. Great. So at this point, um, Ms. Bibi, can, can you share any success story or milestone that the foundation has achieved well, to this point? One of our biggest um, success and milestone for Ghana Cancer Foundation is when we were approached by American Cancer Society in 2021 to be a member for American Cancer Society. And we had to take that step. Uh, we, they sent a template that we had to fill out in 2021, December, 17 pages with the structure of the organization, the volunteers, the doctors on board and thing. And we were very successful with that. And we became a member last year, March, a licensed member for American Cancer yeah. Society. And that is one of our huge success i would say for guyana because we took guyana on the top of the uh, 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 we took on top of the world and we on just february we were invited to uh, to the to the lisbon uh, portugal to represent guyana uh, six of us went five of us from guyana and one of our team member from chicago she also joined us on on, on this um, thing and it was very very interactive the forum was about relay for life and relay for life it's like um it's about gan um survivors and caregivers they are they emphasize that it must be for cancer survivors and caregivers so mm -hmm. next year february i will host the first event in guyana guyana cancer foundation as a matter of fact we'll host our first relay for life in guyana and i'm asking all all Guyana to come on board with me for this because um, we'll need the support of schools, private and public schools to come on board with this. And we ask also for prizes to, 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 to so like teams and stuff can get prizes with these th um, thing. Great. What are some of the most um, pressing issues facing cancer patients and their families? Oh, oh well, I would say that um, I've been advocating to the government for, um, for a low cost therapy, radiation therapy center in Guyana, because what you find you have cancer, cancer Institute. They're the only entity in Guyana that offer radiation therapy. They also offer chemotherapy that you have to pay. Well now, public hospital, they offer chemotherapy free of cost, but to get the radiation therapy, you have to go through Cancer Institute of Guyana, and it's not cheap. You have to pay like from 500,000 up to 1.4 million to get treatment for like 33 sessions, depends on the session for radiation therapy, uh, which is very costly for our poor cancer patients. 
it's hard to find that money. I would assist with uh, with a small fraction in getting um, with with poor cancer patient come to us. We will help with um, radiation and um, scans for cancer patients. Great. So how do you guys collaborate with other organizations or entities in the cancer community in the cancer community to achieve your goals? Uh, well, I don't have any other cancer thing that I collaborate with in Guyana, but I co collaborate with other NGOs to do, to do um, medical outreach programs and stuff like right that. Right here? Yes. In yeah, Guyana. Yeah. As I mentioned, CIOG, mm. um, Dante's Therapeutic Body Works, Seaway International, um, you have the GPHC I team and, so, and blood bank. We normally do blood bank all the time with us. Great. How do you measure the impact of your foundation's work and what metrics do you use to evaluate success? I would say that um, the going, going honesty and getting, getting help for the patients mm -hmm. and, we, and, and with the counseling and so for cancer patients, I think that's a success for us. But let me just share a story with you before we um, wrap it up. Um, I had aunt that died from cervical cancer as I, we spoke um, before it actually started and the thing about it is that um, it forces me to question you know, a lot of our medical practitioners about cancer and this is where I'm going to ask you uh, probably not really too, too much of a difficult question but um, she went to some public hospitals some being West Side some being in Georgetown and so on and they tend to tell her that um, she was she had like a cyst or something like that. But then, you know, after feeling all this pain and, you know, all these traumas that she went through, she went back a few months later and then they diagnosed her with cervical cancer. So the question, I know you're not too much of a medical practitioner. But I, I can tell you. But um, what are you guys, you know, besides just screening, what are you guys doing mostly to help people that, you know, doesn't even know okay. they have cancer? Well, what a lot of people just reach out to us through our Facebook page or call us, right? Yeah. So what we do, we try to um, get them to the right doctors. Now, one of the persons that I will refer them to is the oncology department at Georgetown Public Hospital, Dr. Husto, who is the head of the department at uh, Georgetown oncology department. His name is Dr. Husto and he is the head of the department. Yeah. I also would do referrals to Dr. Rafi Groza and he's head of the department of gynecology at GPHC and he has his private cl clinic and also Dr. Guy Lowe, who is a gynecologist. Yeah. Yeah. You know that, yeah. right? Um, well, those are the three doctors I would normally refer them to. Dr. Husto is a very good um, oncologist at public hospital. And when, while Dr. Ravindra Nath was alive, I used to refer a lot of patients to him too. Mm -hmm. He's, he wasn't about money. He was about getting that patient well. That's how he was. He, never about, he was never about money. He could, a person could go to him and he would see them free, free of course. Yeah. yeah. So and it's, 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 in Guyana, is getting the right doctor. And sometimes you'll find that People will come to me when they're at stage four. No, stage four is, is, is you can't do anything. It's just they got to get, what you call it, um, hospice treatment, or they got to get his morphine injections. They got like pain, pain, pain management then. Mm -hmm. Pain management that they, that they can live one day at a time until when they're ready. Because sometimes cancer spread all over your body. You can get breasts and it go to your brain, it go to your liver, mm -hmm. it go to, to your cervix and all of that. So it's, you know, it's, it's cancer is, is a dreaded disease. My mom is a cancer survivor. And next month she will be eight to one years age. Right. And she was diagnosed in her 60s. You see, the thing about cancer um, advocacy also is, is, is such a, a wonderful thing. And I think that, um, more people should be involved in it because I mean, speaking to young people in general yeah. should be something. No, with we our screening program that we did with uh, Dr. Balwan Singh, I was looking through some of the re I get some of the reports yesterday, and not a set of reports to close it off. And where you find some of the women, young women that had the like the ultrasound of the breast, right? You find they get fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is is like a um, 
it's a thing that's grow anything. Sometimes it's not. Um, you can get, you can use a, 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 a FNE, a fine needle aspiration, and you can take out that. Or sometimes it depends on how it is. They don't have to do surgery. Sometimes they have to do surgery. It's not. It's sometimes it's not cancerous. You know. So, it's not. But yes, and I I did a a few years ago in 2020. I did a a thing on a website for one a, a cancer conference that I was supposed to attend and I, because of money I couldn't attend it. I did I they put me on the committee and I had to do all the signing of the, the certificates and things for the attendance and so nice. and um and I had to do a thing and I did it on the same fiber media for wow. um for breast cancer. I had to do something on breast cancer for, for the website and I okay. did it on it. Yeah. And here what, what I did because of all the reports I'll be getting I, and I'm no doctor. I use that same report and go through it. And that's how I, I and then I went on 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 a cancer, and that's how I get some information, and I did my own thing on it. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And uh, lastly, Miss Bibi, um, what advice would you give to someone who is interested in starting a cancer foundation or getting involved in cancer advocacy work? Um, they have to. It's it's a long story. The long. No, first, they have to register. They have to go through the. Ministry of Social Protection through the co-op section, the friendly society, as I should say, and their, their rules and regulation, what they should do, they should go and get the bylaws mm -hmm. and go through, you got to go through the system, yeah, and normally it's seven persons to be on the board to, to, to register foundation, seven. yeah, yes, and you have to go through, it's by law, you have to go through the, um, the friendly society and Ministry of Social Protection. Great, great. Yeah. You guys definitely heard it from Ms. Bibi Hassan. Um, if, if, if corporate gain, you guys need any form of screening. You know, if you have a, a cancer, you know, picture a family member, a friend or anybody that, you know, you think, you know, requires some sort of special attention that they're probably not getting from our medical practitioners, whether it be the hospital or private or even public, you guys could reach out to the Guyana Cancer Foundation, which is spearheaded by Miss BB Hassan. So um Corporate Guy and I urge you guys to pay you know great attention also to cancer since it has been around for so long all these years and it's still plaguing our society and also uh, study shows that um in the future it's gonna be even more you know tragic. So you know it depends on the food we eat and, and yeah and, and yeah these, definitely definitely and these sort of things. So I urge crop again again to get screened. Males do not be afraid to get prostate screened. prostate cancer for males. Prostate yeah. cancer for male. Males do not There's be afraid. number number um, three in Guyana. You have the breast cancer is the first, yeah. um, the high incidence. Then you got cervical cancer close, and then prostate cancer. And then you have childhood cancer as well childhood too. Cancer. Yeah. So. You guys heard about the tree, and again, I heard crop again. Again, I reiterated. You can see how much time I'm actually advocating for it. But you guys go out and get screen, and let's all try to live a healthy and safe life. Miss Baby Yasan has been such a wonderful pleasure actually speaking to you from February to now. It's definitely worth the wait. I want to take one thing: early detection helps save lives. Early detection helps save lives definitely we here at big smith news watch definitely will um keep up the breast with the progress that you guys are making sure. you guys could invite us to um your function your I'll, meeting. I'll, I'll do a lunch on the 4th of june this is national cancer survive day which is being celebrated across the globe and yeah. i'll be doing a lunch at our office on that day for our cancer survivors club okay so you're invited from now to come, yeah, right? From now to so June. So let me know if you come in. I'm coming. I'll make sure I get my nice uni. Yeah, you got to wear, wear a mauve, mauve, mauve or purple. That's the oh, color. Mauve or purple. Yeah, that's the color. Great, yeah. great, great, great. So um, definitely, again, Miss Baby has been, again, it's such a wonderful time speaking to you. And we will definitely stay tab yeah. since I have you on my um, social media handles. Um, you guys, uh, again, corporate again, you guys should go out and follow the Guyana Cancer Foundation page on Facebook. We're, so we're in, on TikTok, on we're TikTok on, on Instagram, mm. where website is www.ganacf.com. We're on Instagram, ganacancerf.com on Instagram. We're on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. TikTok, all, all, all the social media. Stay up to breast with what's going on so that we are going to fight against cancer. I want to say a special thanks to my technical operator, Mr. Delizer. Until next time, guys. Bye.